Hey everyone, welcome to Wicode, where in this video we're going to learn how to create a custom React application that uses TypeScript by configuring Webpack. We'll also learn how to configure the TypeScript compiler by using tsconfig.json. We'll learn what Webpack loaders are and also what Babel presets are. And just so to begin, this video is a continuation of my previous video with Webpack where we created a React application without Create React App. Um, and now we're just going to be adding TypeScript functionality. But to, before we begin, something I want to do is split up our webpack.config.js file into development and production webpack files. So we're going to create two files, webpack.dev.js and webpack.prod.js at the top level of the project. So the webpack.dev.js file will contain webpack configuration that is only needed for development and the webpack.prod.js file will contain webpack configuration that is only needed for production. The file webpack.config.js will contain the commonalities between both production and development environments. But before we add any contents to these new webpack files, let's install the library webpack merge as a development dependency. This library will merge the contents of webpack.config.js with both the development and production webpack files. Now, let's put everything that involves developing our React application from webpack.config.js to webpack.dev.js. We'll also import and use the webpack merge library to merge webpack.config.js with webpack.dev.js. So first, we import the webpack merge library's merge function to combine webpack.config.js to webpack.dev.js. We also set the mode to configuration, or we set the mode to development, which tells webpack not to minimize the code because this is a development environment. And we also change the entry point from index.js to index.tsx, as we are going to be using TypeScript with JSX syntax. And now let's move everything that involves production uh, from webpack.config.js to our production webpack file. So once again, we use the webpack merge library's merge function to combine um, our config file with our production webpack file. And we also specify here the mode to be production, so webpack will make the code um, much smaller. This mode should always be used in production. But after moving all this, let's remove everything that isn't now a commonality between these two files. But now we also need to create scripts to run our development and production webpack files. So we'll do this, of course, inside package.json under scripts. And we'll make a script for running both our development webpack file and our production file. So this config option that we supplied allows us to specify the configuration file that we want Webpack to use. And by default, Webpack looks for webpack.config.js, so if we use a different file, we have to specify the name. And now let's begin installing some TypeScript packages. So to begin using TypeScript with React, we need to install some required dependencies. And the first one is just TypeScript itself. And so this TypeScript library adds optional types, close this for a sec, it adds optional types to JavaScript and compiles to readable JavaScript. And now let's install some additional required dependencies. So these are um, at types-react and at types-react-react-dom. And 
can we also save in this development pen dependencies by tagging on dash D. And so this NPM scope at types is used for obtaining type definitions with NPM. The at types dash react package contains type definitions for react and the at types dash react DOM package contains type definitions for the react DOM. And we also need to install a TypeScript Babel preset for Babel as a development dependency. And a Babel preset is simply a shareable set of Babel configurations. So this package preset TypeScript includes a plugin transform TypeScript plugin, which adds support for type syntax used by TypeScript. So that's it with the Babel stuff. And now we need to install the Webpack Loader TS Loader. And a Webpack Loader is used to process files during bundling. As member, Webpack is a module bundler, and the TS Loader will pass TypeScript files to the TypeScript compiler. And let's now inform Webpack that we are going to be using the TS loader for TypeScript files. In other words, files ending with the extension .tsx or .ts. So we do this by adding another rule into our Webpack configuration file. So we're using some regex here, as you can tell by this line here and this dash here. And essentially what it's doing is it's telling Webpack that for files ending in .ts or .tsx, we need to use the TS loader Webpack loader. We also tell Webpack to exclude the node modules folder as we don't need the TS loader compiling anything in there. And finally, we also need to add a key, resolve. And this resolve key configures how Webpack resolves modules. So now when we import files within modules, Webpack will first attempt to resolve the file as a .tsx file, then .ts, and so on. So the order here is important. And now let's create a ts, or a TS config .json file. So in the root level of our project. And so a ts config .json file is the configuration file for the TypeScript compiler. So let's use this file to configure our TypeScript compiler. We'll create a new JSON or create a JSON object where each key and value changes the configuration of the compiler. So the key compiler options contains the rules that the TypeScript compiler needs to enforce. Setting target here to ES2017 tells the compiler that we are using 2017 ECMA standards for JavaScript. We could use other ones. This is just one I've been using uh, recently. And setting the module here to common.js or common.js tells the compiler that we are using import and export for modules. Setting strict null checks to true tells the compiler that variables can only have null or undefined values if they are assigned those values. Next, ES module interrupt, to setting that to true, allows us to import CommonJS modules into an ES6 module codebase. Next, this JSX key, so controls how JSX compiles into JavaScript. And then finally, the include key tells the compiler what files these rules need to be applied to. Specifying source, tells the compiler to apply these rules to every file in the source folder. And now let's change all our .js files to .tsx files. A tsx file is a TypeScript file written using JSS, JSX syntax. So what we need to change specifically is our app.js to app.tsx, which is a component.
and then we need to change index.js to index.jsx or tsx. Now let's work with some TypeScript. So let's add some interfaces to our app component. We'll create an interface for both the state and props that are passed to this component. So real quick, an interface is a structure that defines a contract in the application. So we set a contract basically with the state and also the properties that are passed to this component. And we can see some useful TypeScript um, information. If I say we add another key in here, hello, set that to message, we'll get an error about how basically, because we have an interface with the state where we only have a rendered property, adding any other ones, will not be good unless we add string here, then this would be okay. But get rid of these. But now let's go into index.tsx and let's pass in this message prop. We can see in here actually, that if we hover over this, property message is missing. So of course we could make this not required like this and the error would go away. But if we do want it required, could pass in the code it's cool so now we just have to run the application so what we will do close this again to run this application in development mode we just use the script npm start and we can see it looks by default well this is working by default, it kind of seems as though we are using port uh, 8080. You can change this in the Webpack dev by using dev server, which I can maybe go over in a future video. But essentially, if you visit localhost 8080, you'll be able to access this application in development mode. And now we just need to try this out with production, which just makes essentially makes a, um, a build of our application. So if we do npm run build, It'll run our build script, package.json. Let's search in here now, and here it is. So here's our build. So we have our dist folder. We have our index.html with our bundle.js, which here contains all our code. And now just one final thing I wanna mention before finishing this video is that with Babel 7, we do not actually need the TS loader webpack loader. So as of Babel 7, the TS loader is unnecessary. Um, as Babel 7 understands TypeScript already. However, personally, I've just always been using the TS Loader and I'm just more familiar with using it that way. I believe the app Babel preset TypeScript library that we installed, so this one here, I believe is still required to get that working with if you're just using Babel Loader, which is what we were using here with our um, JavaScript files in previous Webpack configuration video. But I believe there is a difference also between the TS loader here and the Babel loader. And it's that um, the TS loader type checks during transpilation, while the Babel loader does not. So that's just a key difference between the two. But besides that, using this way works just as well. So if you like this video, um, hope, I want to thank you for liking and subscribing today. And besides that, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Have a good one.